Welcome to the MUFG Global Markets Podcast with SN Coman, Head of Emerging Markets Research EMEA. It's Friday, 11th June 2021, and this week we're discussing the prospects of higher interest rates across emerging markets. The following podcast is intended for professional investors and eligible counterparties only, and not for retail clients. Any content should not be regarded as an offer to conduct investment business or an investment recommendation, but for information purposes only. Essen, you have been discussing the prospects of higher interest rates across emerging markets with me earlier. What commonalities are there with previous episodes of higher interest rates? Thanks, Ernest. So yes, each central bank is normally broadly optimizing domestic conditions, notably the management of inflation and economic growth. Yet recent history, going back to early 2000s, uh, signaled that emerging market central banks tend to adjust interest rates either to the upside or downside in tandem to one another. By tandem, we meet at least roughly around a third or more central banks moving in sync. Now, Ona, these common cycles normally occur during global recessions where central banks cut interest rates or the subsequent adjustment and normalization period where central banks, in fact, hike rates. As, as economies recover. And of course, there are periods where there are opposing strategies which usually run in sync, which is broadly flat uh, relative to policy rates in the United States. Interestingly, like EM policy rates, EM inflation rates are also have been softening in recent years. Specifically, 12-month forward EM inflation expectations have steadily declined from roughly above 4% in the early 2000 period to around 3 to 3.5% at the current juncture, while U.S. inflation has hovered around 2% with long-term inflation expectations declining. And here, inflation expectations between EM and U.S. are almost always positively correlated, especially during times of acute uncertainty and crises, such as the great financial crisis of 2008-2009 and the current pandemic that we're experiencing. Now, fast forward to now and putting the current environment into the historical backdrop, it would appear that the next 12 months may be a period of normalization after significant, broadly widespread emerging market central bank rate cuts during the brunt of the pandemic period in 2020. And on inflation, both the US and EM inflation expectations have elevated higher in recent months. And for EMs, a potential wave of rate hikes is a core apprehension to global markets. And building on this SM, what are the financial asset implications of emerging markets hiking cycles? Well, Ona, so here is where it gets interesting. So using our common EM hiking and cutting cycle characterization of at least a third of EM central banks moving policy rates in tandem, then hiking cycles normally lead to a mixed asset performance, namely negative EM equities as well as credit returns, whilst we also have above average FX performance. And in terms of economic growth rates, it remains quite varied. And it is worth noting that Despite the fairly well-organized return pattern across monetary policy cycles in emerging markets, a direct causal relationship is not necessarily obvious here. Now, presumably, the macro conditions that pressure EM central banks to raise rates, such as rising domestic inflation or capital outflows from these countries, can be important drivers of asset market returns as well. And in short, the global macro environment is likely to be the primary driver of broad asset returns, particularly over the medium to long term. Nevertheless, it is well documented that EM currencies and equities tend to move materially around EM inflation and EM central bank meetings, suggesting that incremental policy changes do have strong effects on asset markets. Just one additional comment here, Ona. There is a caveat that not all cycles start on an equal footing and some rate high calls, uh, cycles come as hawkish idiosyncratic shocks, whereas others might be well flagged by policymakers and well priced by markets. And so this differential carries important signals. But on the whole, the findings are, just to recap, hiking cycles normally lead to mixed asset performance, namely negative EM equity, as well as credit returns, above average FX performance and varied economic growth rates. And finally, Essan, putting it all together, what can we expect for the remainder of 2021? Well, you know, we have discussed that the start of the policy normalization process uh, in a few weeks ago has begun in places across the EM complex, such as places like Brazil, uh, Russia, Ukraine, and, and, and Turkey, albeit there are idiosyncrasies 
surrounding Turkey that could lead to rate cuts in the third quarter. But excluding Turkey for a moment, rate markets are pricing uh, rate hikes in other places uh, across the EM complex, such as in Mexico and Colombia and Latin America. Uh, across EMEA, uh, we have places like South Africa, Czech Republic and Hungary. And in terms of emerging Asia, places like Indonesia. And so in each cycle, whilst it has its own heterogeneity, taking the central banks we mentioned that we have earlier begun to hike, Brazil for us fits the historical precedent well, wherein the well-articulated hiking cycle has been met with robust FX performance and equity outperformance. And coming into the first 75 basis point hike in March, which was a larger hike than the market anticipated, Brazilian equity had underperformed pairs considerably for the year, though this has been not unusual for, for Brazil with, with widely fluctuating equity performance cycles in recent years. The more impressive turn has been in the currency, which has been consistently lagging EM uh, currencies with very few bouts of outperformance. Now, since the first hike in March, uh, of, 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 of uh, 17th of March, the Brazilian real has gained around 7% against the US dollar outperforming pairs by roughly around 4 to 5%. Meanwhile, in places like Russia, which has also hiked slightly more than the market expected in both March and in April, and the initial market reaction there was mild underperformance across both equity and FX, though there are other factors weighing in on Russian assets, of course, pertaining to geopolitical considerations that one needs to bear in mind. But on net owner, the historical precedent of hiking cycles is a broadly sensible outline for markets to factor in our view as we begin to see more emerging market rate hikes in the months ahead. But of course, this needs to be factored with individual country heterogeneities, which are ever so important when examining emerging markets. Thanks very much for your insight, Essan. Have a great week and we'll speak to you next week. Thanks, Una. Talk to you soon. Thank you for listening to this MUFG Global Markets Podcast. Rate, review and subscribe and reach out to your MUFG sales rep for further information. Come back next week for more insights from the Global Markets Research Team.